Hello and welcome to another episode of the Classical Republican. Today we are talking about the Second Hellenistic Republic. And let's just review really quickly. Back in the 19th century, in the uh, from 1822 to 1832, there was the first uh, Hellenistic Republic, and uh, that was uh, the first government of Greece. And it was very chaotic, and it fell apart. And the Western uh, imperial powers wanted them to have a king. So they had a king for oh, almost a century. Uh, they were uh, German and uh, Danish. And then they, uh, what, in 1923, there was a coup that toppled the monarchy. Um, so from 24 to 35, there was a second republic. Um, also, at this time, we have a changing of vocabulary. We don't, um, that, well, the first republic was, uh, they used the term politeia, uh, which uh, in English is polity. And so that is the, uh, harkens back to the idea of Aristotle and his, um, his ideal size of a city state where a government um, would be large enough to protect people, but small enough where people can make a, an impact on their, on their, uh, on their community. Um, so they, they, they drop that and they start using demokratia, uh, which you know, is democracy, but it's not the democracy, the direct democracy that we, we saw in ancient Athens. It's more like a modern liberal republic. And so this democ democratia is kind of a, um, a liberal republic. Um, you know, it means democracy, kind of like how we use democracy to mean liberal democracy today, um, which also has a little bit of mix of uh, republicanism in it. Okay, so we're 1924. Now, let me give you a few other, um, uh, a few other uh, problems that are going on here. And what's going on at this time, well, just before this time is that we had the um, Greco-Turkish War. And the, here's a little update on the expansion of Greece. Um, you can see by looking at this map and what happened in right after World War One is uh, Greece uh, sided with the Allies, fought against the Ottomans, and uh, they they took over a lot of land here in the um, in the uh, in in Asia Minor, and so that was uh, they, they they took a lot of land and probably like like uh, half of of, um, of modern day Turkey. And then they, they overstretched their lines and then got pushed back by Ataturk and uh, the Turks um, were able to push them all the way back. Um, and it was a, it was a pretty, pretty bad, devastating uh, experience for Greece. There were all these refugees uh, from there because if you remember from, the, <clears throat> from your Roman history, um, there were more Greek speaking people in Asia Minor than there were on the modern mainland of Greece, of, of what we think of as Greece today. Uh, so you had all these refugees pouring into um, this smaller Greece, well, which is bigger from when we looked at it last time, but from prior to World War I, <clears throat> uh, was smaller. Now, so you have this, uh, you have all these refugees, you have a huge refugee problem. And then you have a very unpopular Treaty of Ankara. And that's where um, the, the Greek government agreed to, um, uh, that, that the, to, the, to the borders and to the, the people exchange. So a lot of Turks had to go to, um, you know, leave Greece and go to Turkey. A lot of uh, Greeks had to leave uh, Turkey, what was then now Turkey and go to, go to Greece, what is now Greece. And you also had the Great Depression. So this caused a lot of instability, but we have a pretty uh, 
pretty, I, I would say a pretty good government. Uh, you have these, um, uh, you have a lower house, which was a bully of 200 to 250 for four year terms. They were elected by the people. Uh, you had a uh, liberal party, which was uh, kind of a, a Republican um, uh, party. And then you had the uh, People's Party, which was a pro-monarchist party. Uh, then you, okay, so you had, and, and those were the parties that operated, uh, the most popular parties that operated in this parliamentary system. Then you had the upper house, which was the Gerusia, which was a, an institution that we, uh, we, you know, which was basically a Senate. Um, the Gerusia uh, comes from the Spartan, uh, Spartan admin, uh, administration, uh, Spartan regime uh, thousands of years ago. Now they had 120 members of their Senate, but um, the majority were elected by the people, but then they also had some some members were elected by the lower house and the Senate together. You had uh, some that represented ethnic minorities and you had some that were uh, elected by unions. So we kind of see something similar to that uh, at this time in, in Italy. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty interesting. Uh, you have a lot of different sectors of society being, uh, you know, having a mandatory representation in um, in the upper house, and uh, but with all these problems, uh, the Great Depression, the treaty, and uh, the refugee crisis, you have um, a lot of instability uh, just in the political environment because of those things, and uh, the the government falls apart, the monarchy is restored, and um, I, Yanis Metaxas is uh, a appointed dictator. So um, he's kind of uh, semi-fascist. Um, kind of, he's a little bit more like uh, Franco in Spain, where Franco wasn't um, uh, I don't know if you can call him an actual fascist, though he did have connections with fascists. There were fascists in his government, um, but and he did fascist things. But uh, he also did some other things that uh, that weren't exactly fascist. So it's difficult to um, to categorize him as a straight up fascist, but definitely uh, sympathized with the fascist, and that was um, that was their um, yeah, that was their form of government. So, all right. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, until next time, long live the Republic.